All right, everyone, it's time for the last garden update before July. I figured, you know, hit a quarter million subs. Might as well do this, but the big reason is this. Um, you can see sweet basil, a little bit different from the purple kind, some <laughs> solar lights. Uh, the big reason is we're about to have a six day long massive heat wave, upper 80s through the mid 90s every single day. This is the now new and improved yucca. It's looking way, way better already. It's going to be massively sunny and extremely hot for the next six to seven days. And so the corn and beans are definitely going to shoot right up. I wanted to make sure that you see what they look like. So after the heat wave, I figure I'll record again. You can see the difference. This is a patch of asparagus, nicosiana, and corn poppies. Those are all doing really well. Yeah, got Lily over there. The gas plant, Dictamnus alba, finally looks good. You know, compared to past years, is uh, putting out new shoots, new growth on the existing shoots. It should uh, yeah, be about six inches taller, I hope. Another onion died. There's not enough dirt in here, that's what I think. Uh, but those that have survived are doing really, really well. That's one big-ass onion plant. Here's the corn and beans, all right, so that you can get an idea. These tallest ones are about six inches, well, not even six inches away from waist height. The key is knee-high by the 4th of July. Any corn that's not at that point, might as well rip it out because, fucking, it's not going to produce anything. Usually, though, even here in this cold climate, with a little bit of fertilization, like I'm using azomite and Neptune's harvest and kelp meal, and that's literally all I'm using. Usually the stuff will be waist high, about half of it before the fourth. Uh, and these bean plants, I mean, look at them. They're loaded with blossoms. There are gonna be so many string beans and nothing's gotten in to eat them down. That's the important part, I'd say. These spaghetti squash plants are starting to vine. Uh, those are looking fine. Those, those will last a little bit longer, you know, around August at some point we'll be getting some spaghetti squash. Big ass black eyed Susan <laughs> growing in the path. I, I realize that I need to do some cleaning and weeding, but for the most part it's pretty good. Look at that. This is one of those little crates you can get for like five bucks off of any website. You just fill it with one bag of uh, stratum, put like five, there's five uh, chamomile plants in there. You keep picking those down throughout the year, they'll make three or four flushes, you can get several boxes of tea. You've, you've actually recovered your investment and it tastes so much better and it's so much more effective. I like to see this crabgrass here, but what I like to do, I'll take the hose and start blasting the area and rip them out, it makes it easier. Also prevents damage to any nearby root systems. These are the zucchini, they're still uh, slightly on the small side there. These ones are bigger. Uh, this one's the best of all. And the turnips, I just watered everything. The turnips were all droopy. Now they're starting to stiffen up because I just got done watering. Uh, it has to do with sun and temperature and some stuff. Mornico sienna, a lot of them. Cucumbers growing well. But yeah, there's going to be some turnips. In a few days, I'm going to have a nice steak dinner with some uh, <laughs> boiled turnips. Oh man, it's one of the tastiest things ever. The tomatoes are all producing, by the way, now as well. You can see. Try to get in there. Uh, where's the one? Yeah, look. Nice big tomato. This is, uh, I believe, the Cherokee variety. There's Black Prince, Cherokee, Roma, Husky, uh, and Cherry, like the classic cherry. All oh, the flowers looking really nice. I've been deadheading them so that they produce more flowers. The marigolds actually are really, really nice this year. Sometimes I have problems with those. They don't really produce much. I've been drying a lot of herbs uh, already, like four loads of thyme, a bunch of basil, which is why the plants are smaller at the moment. Uh, no dill yet. I'm going to be doing that probably tomorrow when it's uh, less humid and more just strictly hot. More chamomile. <laughs> you know, uh, there's probably two boxes of tea worth right there. I love chamomile. I really do. I only have so much of it, but you know, it's great. This is the Nep yeah, this is the Neptune's harvest that I've been using. I uh, yeah, I like that. The fish fertilizer 241. The other one is I think uh, 231 if I remember correctly cabbage I don't know it hasn't started to head up that's a little you know upsetting but everything else in here is already going to seed those mustard seeds you can store them I just got a bunch of uh, jars for herbs two of them full of parsley one of thyme one of basil and one of oregano already uh, then there will be mustard seed more thyme more parsley and probably dill seeds as well because you know you can harvest the, the dill itself then you can also harvest the seeds these collards are massive Look at the size of some of these leaves, and you know, uh, trust me, there's no problem. I got big hands. Ooh, 
Yeah, that fly wanted a piece of the 10.2, I guess. No, these, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be getting at least five or six more meals off these. The verticillium appears not to have done anything to them, other than a couple of these over here look a little bit off. I'm just going to yank them out in a minute. Swiss chard, I don't know whether the asthma might accomplish this or what, but uh, some of those leaves are probably edible. I'm not going to, but you know, they are. That sad sunflower, not as big as its brothers. These ones are already waist high. These will probably be about seven feet tall when they're done. And then the morning glory is starting to vine up. I like that. It's one of my favorite flowers, you know. You can see I harvested all the lower leaves off the thyme. Next year, I'm gonna reconfigure the herbs. Like some of these I figured out to use more than others. Like the cilantro, I'll probably have a plant of that even though we haven't had any tacos or anything yet. Chives, I want like five times as many. Cause you know, when you dry them, they get tiny. Oregano is okay. Parsley is okay, but I want more thyme and more chives and I want to grow marjoram and rosemary and some of these others that I didn't plant this year But the plan is this whole bed with the collards this entire thing's gonna be one big-ass herb garden next year Nothing but herbs as the wood that's put in the hugel culture decomposes. Oh, man, they'll have a, a field day They'll be twice as big and this This is gonna be like five rows of carrots like literally once it's fully raised all the way down from just carrots nothing else Corn and beans in that area, and then an area for, uh, you know, I don't know, put something else in. And then a lot of flowers and stuff and some permaculture. That's basically back here with the asparagus. The rhubarb will be back in here, uh, at least the strawberry rhubarb. And then in back, uh, again, with the cat garden, uh, basically, which is what it is. It's the, <laughs> the cat lawn area. That's going to have a container garden. That'll be where you get anything that can get verticillium, will especially beets. Because I'm tired of having no beets. Like, look at the size of the carrots. I mean, look at these. They're great. And you dig down in there, they're, they're already bigger than they were last year in late August. Uh, meanwhile, you know, all the beets died, every single one of them. I was really upset over it because I am I like pickled beets a lot. I was hoping to get a bumper crop of them. Literally slice them into quarters, pickle them. Oh my god, it's so good. Some people hate pickled beets. I'm like, you know, I'll eat three or four jars of them at once and... You can't stop me. Yeah, I like having sunflowers. I know, technically, it's like, you know, remove it from the corn and beans, but, you know, it looks good. And the squirrels like it. I don't care if they get in here. I really, I couldn't give a shit. They're never going to eat it all. Got that 22 there, you know, <laughs> trying to ward off the skunk. And meanwhile, the squirrels are like, we don't even give a crap. It's not going to do anything about us. I wouldn't have the heart to hurt a squirrel. They're too cute. I got to thin a little bit here. Um, not much though, for the most part it's pretty good. Those poppies in the middle, there's like <laughs> 10 of them there, but they'll be fine. Like it doesn't matter if they only produce one or two blossoms. Basically, I just wanted to renew the corn poppy seed because it's the same seed lineage that I've been growing since my grandfather got me into gardening. Same with the Nicosianas, same genetic lineage. I'm sort of letting nature take its course. This year I'm going to be doing something genetically with the Nicosian. I'm going to be selectively breeding them by destroying them or uh, promoting them based on their phenotypical characteristics. My hope is that within three or four years, three or four generations, I'll be able to have basically a homogenized variant of Nicosiana that won't have interbreeded with anything else. But we'll see what happens because uh, I haven't studied their genetics in depth. So far though, Jesus, so many collards and I love collards and I haven't been able to eat them, <laughs> eat them all down. Uh, it's like geez, you put some herbs and butter in there and you just sort of, uh, you know, cook them. It tastes so good, you have no idea. Try them, please, if you haven't tried collard greens. Uh, those of you south of the Mason-Dixon line, I'm assuming you probably have. A lot of Yankees don't know about them. Uh, up here, up here in these here parts, it's more like uh, iceberg lettuce for the most part. It's so great. That's about all. Peace out.